Hello everybody, welcome to our family time service for Advent. Now, because it is Advent, the Advent wreath is back in church. And you'll notice it's got four candles on it, which are like a countdown to Christmas. So every Sunday leading up to Christmas, we light one of them. Then on Christmas day, we light the big white one in the middle. So this weekend is the second weekend of Advent. So it's time to light the second candle. Here we go. So there we go. We've only got two Sundays to go until Christmas. Now, today we're thinking about John the Baptist and Mark and Margaret are going to tell us a little bit more about him. But the next time in your ch you're in church, have a look at this window at the back of church. Now this is my favourite window in the church and it shows a picture of John the Baptist. You can see the picture behind him of the River Jordan where he baptised people and you can see the camel hair clothes he wore too. But most importantly of all, you can see that he has his fist in the air. That's because John was someone who had a really special message. He was a prophet, someone who had important things to say about truth and light and hope, who wanted people to change their ways. He was somebody who pointed to Jesus. Well, today we're thinking a bit about signs, things that help us on our journey and point us in the right direction. Sometimes there are signposts and we'll see some of those in a minute, see if you can guess what they are. Other times there are people that point us the way to go. John the Baptist was a bit like that. Let's have a look at some of these signs. And look, here's a helpful sign telling you where to go if you're looking to get to the right place. And down the road, can you see lots of other signs as well? There's different signposts further ahead, giving lots of information for people to work things out. And how about this sign? I wonder if you know what this one means. And here's another one. Uh, see if you know what this sign means on this lamppost here. Now here's a sign we see lots of around in St Albans and it's a sign again to help us work out what we should do to keep safe. And here's another one. You know what this sign means? And what do you think this sign might mean? And how about this one? Here's a sign, it's looking a bit faded, but it's still quite clear as to what's on it. I wonder what this one means. Oh, and here's a nice clear sign. What does the blue arrow mean? And there's a big clue with this one underneath the arrow. And here's another sign, lots of words on this one, all about parking rules. And here's another one. You know what this sign means? Look at this fantastic crib scene on top of a letterbox. That's great. And can you see the sign in the background? What does that sign mean? The sign post by the side of the road. I wonder if you know what that one means. So how did you get on? I wonder if you managed to uh, get those right. I'll just run through the answers very quickly. I'm sure you did get those right. The first sign we saw was a speed limit of 30 miles an hour. The next one was a no cycling sign. The one after that, the kind of T shape was a dead end. And the arrow, as the sign said, was one way. And after that, there's a speed limit of 20. And then there was a sign that gives places and directions to go to different places. And just behind that sign was another 30 sign, a giveaway sign and a sign for a roundabout. And of course, the sign that we've all got used to at the moment is the social distance sign that was next in the window. And then there was one warning about there being humps in the road there to slow traffic down. And lastly, there was the sign that gave the list of parking rules in that street. Give yourselves a big pat on the back if you got any of those right. Well done. I'm going to tell you a story about John the Baptist, but the story starts with someone else. In the Old Testament, a very long time ago, there was a prophet called Isaiah. 
What's a prophet? A prophet is somebody who tells people what will happen or how they should live or what they should do. And Isaiah wrote, See, I am sending a messenger to make the path ready for you. He will be a voice crying out in the wilderness saying, Prepare the way of the Lord. And when that messenger came, much later, many years later, he was called John. And he came to prepare the way for Jesus. He lived in the desert, dressed in scratchy camel hair, with a belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and he baptised people. So he was called John the Baptist. And lots of people wanted to hear what he had to say. So they came from all over the countryside to hear what he was talking about. And they poured to the River Jordan, where he baptised them in the river. They came from the countryside, and they came from the big city of Jerusalem. And what he told them was that someone far more important than him was going to come. That was his message, that Jesus, God's own son, was going to come to earth. And he told people that they needed to get ready to meet Jesus. And when people asked, how should we get ready to meet Jesus? He told them they needed to change how they lived. He said they needed to help people who were poor, they needed to be honest, and they needed to be kind and care for other people. And the people thought about it, and they said, we've done bad things, and we're sorry. And John baptised those people in the River Jordan as a sign that they wanted to change their lives and be different and be ready to meet Jesus. So he told them, someone far more powerful than me is coming. I'm not even important enough to take off his sandals. I've baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Advent, we're also waiting for Jesus to come on Christmas Day. This year, after Alex told us that chocolate advent calendars were okay, I've got my first chocolate advent calendar and I'm enjoying eating one every day. But John the Baptist was not eating chocolate advent calendars, he was eating locusts and wild honey and wearing a scratchy camel hair coat, which I think I would find very uncomfortable. And John the Baptist also reminded people of what they needed to do, how they needed to say sorry. So Advent is a good time for us to think about why the world needs Jesus and about some of the things that are difficult in the world, as well as looking forward to him coming. And we can also look towards Jesus and point towards Jesus. And I wonder what sign you would use to show other people what Jesus is like. It's time to pray together now. And we're going to remember four things from the story of John. And each of these things reminds us of something we might want to ask God about in prayer. The first one is John's very simple coat made of camel hair. That reminds us that he was somebody who lived simply and didn't use more than he needed. Let's pray that in this new year, all of us, including our governments, will take action we need to take to protect our world for the future. The second thing is the locusts which John ate. Delicious. However, locusts eat up crops and cause a lot of people around the world to go hungry. Let's pray for people everywhere who struggle to find the money to survive that we will all take action to make sure that everybody in our world has what they need to live. The third object is these chains. John ended up in prison for speaking the truth. So let's pray for everybody today who's facing a hard time, perhaps even going to prison themselves because they are telling the truth and speaking out against injustice. Let's also pray for those who feel imprisoned by illness, loneliness, or missing somebody this year. 
The final object is the candle we lit at the beginning. John was somebody who spent his life pointing to Jesus, the light of the world. At this time when our world feels quite dark and lonely for a lot of people, let's pray that this Advent and this Christmas, people will see the light of Jesus and find out about his huge love for them. Well, thank you for uh, joining us for this family time event uh, over this weekend. It's been great to have you joining in with this. And just to finish off then, a blessing. And I always think in these prayers of blessing at the end of our services, it's great to think of how God wants to bless us, but also those for whom we're thinking about and praying for at the moment as well. So maybe you'd like to remember in your prayers, and as I say this blessing, any that uh, you're thinking of and praying for today as well at the moment. And so to end our service then. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love today and always. Amen. <laughs>